Hey everybody, it's the Ares1999 coming back at you with another video. In today's video, we are going to be talking about some thoughts I have in regards of the Marvel Cinematic Universe post Endgame, especially in the way of the X-Men. I should warn you that this video contains spoilers for Endgame and up through Season 3 of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I'm going to be going over two theories I have for how the Homo Superior will be incorporated into the MCU. So let's dive right in. My first theory is what I like to call Stone Radiation Theory. For this one, I'm going to point out to you Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. If you haven't seen it, basically this show follows a S.H.I.E.L.D. team headed by Phil Coulson that travel around the world doing spy stuff. In Season 2, we are introduced to what are known as the Inhumans, a secret group of individuals that have the potential to have superpowers. This genetic potential was caused by experimentation by the Kree. And you're a Kree, a race of noble warriors? Heroes. Noble warrior heroes. Yes, those Kree, which I suppose makes Captain Marvel an inhuman. I digress. These powers are activated by a process called pterogenesis, which is triggered by exposure to pterogenesis crystals. What I'm saying is that these inhumans become the MCU mutants. Now, the channel NerdSync has an entire video dedicated to why the inhumans should not be used as the X-Men. You can watch it by clicking the card. But the main point is that inhumans choose to have their powers activated. Mutants had no such choice, which is why they work well as a stand-in for minority groups. Where this theory comes in is that the snap takes away that choice. Any Inhumans who were dusted, then returned, would have their powers automatically activated. This would be because the snap caused immense releases of energy starting on Earth. It isn't unheard of for exposure to the stones to give people powers. Just look at Captain Marvel and the Maximoff twins. And in this case, these would be people who would already be predisposed to having abilities. Here, watch the pterogenesis process. And now watch the dusting. The crumbling away effect is pretty similar. This on top of any potential gamma radiation may have triggered the switch. In the comics, it's suggested that the use of nuclear power sources led to an increase in the number of people who are X-gene positive. This theory would allow Marvel to use a backdoor introduction for the mutants and help further tie together the TV shows and the movies. Maybe if they do go for this theory, perhaps specific stones could more specifically relate to certain mutants. Like, for instance, Nightcrawler would be more closely related to the Space Stone, and Magician would be related to the Reality Stone. The second theory is a multiverse theory. Last year, I made a Marvel multiverse theory in regards to Spider-Man and Endgame. Basically, my theory was that Thanos sent half the population to an alternate Earth, in Endgame, some people would come back, but some would stay in the other world. Peter Parker would be among those who stayed. Spider-Man Far From Home would take place in the other world. And in the main world, Miles Morales would become the new Spider-Man. Now, my theory was mostly wrong, but I did get one thing right. And that's that alternate realities would play a role in Avengers 4. Granted, it wasn't how I predicted, but they were still there. This movie's time travel functioned similar to that of Dragon Ball Z. They didn't go back to their own past, but rather opened up an alternate timeline to travel through. When the Ancient One is talking to Bruce Banner, she even refers to it as alternate realities. My theory is that Dr. Pym, and maybe even Dr. Strange, could be exploring the multiverse through way of the quantum realm, and they come across the world of the X-Men. 
This could mean that Marvel Studios could take the already established X-Men movies and add them to their canon. This could lead to some amazing Arrowverse-style shenanigans with people crossing between alternate Earths. <laughs> Imagine one Scarlet Witch meeting the other Scarlet Witch and them working together. This concept was used in Spider-Man Enter the Spider-Verse, which was obviously inspired by my Spider-Man theory. <laughs> Just imagine what the Avengers and X-Men could teach each other about time traveling using power sets that should not have anything to do with time travel. All right, Logan, I need you to clear your head and to stay as calm as possible. What? What do you mean? If your mind gets rocky, it'll be harder for me to hold you, and you could start to slip between past and future. What if I I prefer this theory because it would allow for multiverse jumping, which could lead to any number of different MCU movies. It would also mean that the X-Men movie series, which has been going on for a while, could be continued while still allowing for X-Men in the MCU. With that said, I think that stone radiation theory is the more likely of the two. If Marvel goes for it, then they can start fresh with the X-Men and decide how they want to develop the characters. It hasn't really been Marvel's style to adopt pre-made films into their timeline, and they can make highly profitable individual setup films for some of the X-Men, including Xavier, Wolverine, Cyclops, Beast, and Marvel Girl. Either way, I would love to see mutants in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It would be a great way to have a second saga of movies by mixing together the X-Men with the Avengers. The two teams could be great allies. Maybe the X-Men, or at least some of their members, could become a part of the Avengers. Although I do think that there should be a Civil War style movie so we can watch them go head to head. You know what? As long as we're going down this rabbit hole, let's throw in the Fantastic Four. Third time's a charm, am I right? <laughs> Maybe for this, they are trying to travel through the multiverse into the end zone, and that's how they get their powers. With the Fantastic Four in here, then we could also pull in Galactus as the next big bad for the whole franchise. <laughs> Imagine this. The year is 2035. We are in Phase 6 of Marvel. There have been another 27 movies and a dozen more TV shows. Galactus is teaming up with Doctor Doom, Magneto, and the Phoenix to reshape the world. They could get the other villains from throughout the franchise to work with them. The Avengers assemble with the Defenders, Guardians of the Galaxy, Wakandan Army, Ravagers, Sorcerers, Asgardian Army, the X-Men, and the Fantastic Four. It's a massive event that takes place over an epic trilogy of Avengers 8, Avengers 9, and Avengers 10! <laughs> did I just get carried away? Yes. Yes, I did. Massively. But it was a fun tangent to go off on. <laughs> anyway, that's my take on it. Provided you guys two theories... Mm, very well possible that Marvel isn't going to use either of them, but I think they would both be cool. So what do you think? Should Munes be added to the MCU? And if so, how? I will see you all next time. Have a great day, and God bless.